This video covers procedural quest generation in Quest Machine. Procedural quest generation is the automatic creation of new quests based on the current game state. It takes a fair bit of initial setup, but the payoff is infinite quests that are relevant to the current state of the game world. In the background here, we've been playing a procedurally generated quest. And this is how we'll set up the game world for procedural generation. Select Tools, Pixel Crushers, Quest Machine, Quest Generator. This window has several sections that work with different asset types. We'll start with Factions. Click New to create a new faction. Name it Faction underscore Orcs. Then create another faction and name it faction underscore quest giver. We're going to set up these two factions so that they dislike each other. To do this, we assign the other faction and a negative affinity. Next, we'll create entities, which are platonic or abstract concepts of things in the game world. Create a new entity named entity type underscore orc. We'll set its display names and its icon. and we'll assign the orc faction. The parent list allows entity types to inherit attributes from other entity types. Urgency functions allow quest givers to determine which entities are the most important to generate quests about. We'll use the default threat function, which is based on faction values, but you can also define your own urgency functions. We'll come back to actions later. Create a new entity type for the quest giver. and we'll set his faction too. We'll assign drives to the quest giver. This defines the quest giver's personality, what he thinks is important. For him, safety is very important. Drives are essentially just names and numbers. You can define your own to match your game. These are the urgency functions that I mentioned earlier. And now we'll get to actions, which are the most complex but interesting part of quest generation. Create a new action named action underscore defeat. Set the display name to defeat. Motives are rationales for choosing this action. They consist of text and drive values that allow quest givers to choose the right motive for their personality. In the text, we're going to use some special tags. The tags in uppercase are special built-in tags. You can find their definitions in Tools, Pixel Crushers, Quest Machine, Quest Reference. You can use this window to copy these tags to the clipboard and also to see what each one does. The tags in lowercase are used as lookup fields if you've assigned a text table to the quest giver. We'll assign some drive values to this motive. 
If an action has multiple motives, the quest giver will choose the motive that most aligns with their drive values. Now we'll set the text that will be generated for the active and successful states of the quest. These again will use some built-in tags. We're going to set up this quest to use a kill counter, so we'll use these two counter tags. The quest generator does not directly manipulate the game world. Instead, it builds an internal mental model that represents what it thinks the game world will be like after performing certain actions. The first step in generating a quest is building that model based off of what the quest giver knows about the world. It then uses the urgency functions to identify an entity that it should build a quest about. And then it chooses a sequence of actions that results in a world model that it thinks is better. Actions can have requirements. If these requirements aren't met, then that action can't be used. In this case, we're going to require that the entity is present in order for it to be defeated. The effects specify what happens when this action is completed. In this case, if the entity is defeated, it's removed from this domain. Actions need a way to know when they're complete. This is the action's interface into the game world. In this case, we'll tell the action to maintain a counter value named defeated. The counter should increment whenever the message killed and the name of the target entity is sent. And you can see here that we've set up an orc spawner to spawn orcs that send that very message when the orc is killed. And now we assign that action to the orc. Quest generation gets much more interesting when you have a lot of different entity types and a lot of different actions available on those entity types. But to keep this tutorial simpler, we're just going to have one of each. Finally, we're going to define some domains. Domains are areas in the quest generator's mental model that entity types can be in. We'll define two entity types, one called the woods, and another for the quest giver himself. This can represent the quest giver's inventory. Now we need to tie that abstract idea of a domain type to a physical space in the game world. 
I've set up a trigger collider area named Domain. Add a Quest Domain component and assign our domain type. Inspect the ORC and add a Quest Entity component and assign the entity type. On the Quest Giver, add a Quest Generator component. We'll assign our Quest Giver entity type, our Quest Giver's domain, and we'll assign the domains that it watches. These are the domains from which it builds its mental model. For clarity, let's rename this one domain underscore woods. We'll leave require return to complete ticked, which will add a node requiring the PC to return to this quest. The quest giver. generator can also generate rewards. These are very dependent on your game. For now, we'll just use the example XP reward system, which sends a message that rewards XP to the player. Finally, instead of the quest giver's method, we're going to select quest generator entity start dialog with player. This is like quest giver start dialog with player, but it ensures that a quest has been generated first. When working with procedural generation, you may find it very helpful to inspect the quest machine game object and under debug settings, tick debug quest generator. This will give you a lot of good information about how the generator is running. And this is the generated quest. We can see that it's replaced the tags with text relevant to the generated quest. At this point, let's pause and go over how this quest was generated. The domain underscore woods detected some number of quest entities inside its trigger area. When the quest giver started to generate its quest, it built a world model by looking at this domain, recording that there were some number of orc entity types. It then ran the orc entity type's threat urgency function and determined that the orc entity type was the highest priority to generate a quest on. Then it looked at the orc entity type and chose an action that would improve the world from its point of view. That action was the defeat action. If that action's requirements weren't met, it would chain together other actions available on entities in the world model so that it could complete it. In this case, the requirements are met, so it generates a quest to defeat some number of orcs. When it generates the quest, it uses the text templates in the action and replaces the tags with the entities and values that it's chosen. It then adds this quest to the quest giver's list, and the quest giver shows it in the dialog UI. And just as with handwritten quests, you can examine generated quests in the quest editor at runtime too. And that's the basics of quest generation. You can find many more details in the Quest Machine Manual's chapter on quest generation. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.